joined by two local sports editor chris mcnulty and peter campbell ah chris, first off, some players that you were watching earlier in the year that haven't made it to the all-ireland final well, i suppose in fairness, chris, there aren't too many players and that we could look back and say maybe that they should have been in or they could have been in but i suppose if we look back to last year, donegal have lost two central figures from that squad um kevin cassidy, i suppose, being the obvious one um his situation being well documented and i suppose our hearts go out maybe this weekend to michael hegarty um who had been coached back out of retirement by Jim McGuinness for last year's team and he won his Ulster medal which he had so badly craved over the last 10 to 15 years and Michael opted then not, not to come back for this year so I suppose we've got to have Michael Hegarty in our thoughts this weekend. Uh, Peter, I think Donegal have only been beaten once in the last two years and that was obviously last year. Um, Donegal fans expect that this is going to be their year. That said, that overconfidence, will that affect them on Sunday and what do you expect to pan out? No, I don't think that'll affect them on Sunday, and that's down to one man, Jim McGuinness, and that's the reason why probably they've won 11 out of 12 games so far. I think he he has, he'll prepare the team uh, the way he has done for every game so far, and uh, that you know he takes the, he took the players away for four days last week. Uh, they've been off uh, social media altogether this week, and obviously under strict orders to do so, and that's the way he meticulously prepares every team uh, for every game. And that's the main reason. Donegal are in the Iron Final. It's absolutely packed here at the Abbey Hotel. Uh, who do you think will star for Donegal or for Mayo? And what are the key battles, Chris, that we have to look out for? Well, I think with Donegal, it's really all about the collective pierce. But I suppose in, in, in every line of the field, I think Donegal have what you would call a recognised leader, a, a recognised marquee name. You know, we look from the full back line, um, Neil McGee behind him, Paul Durkin, who's been fantastic this year. We go to the half back line, Carol Lacey, absolutely immense. The semi final was was won thanks largely to one of the best midfield performances ever by a Donegal midfielder and Neil Gallagher. Um, we looked down in the forward line and you know what two or what three better forwards and the likes of Patrick McFerdy, Michael Murphy, Colin McFadden. You could really go through all 15 of the Donegal players but uh, the key to Donegal has been the collective and that utter sort of dependability that's about the collective. We haven't uh, spoken much about the two managers, uh, Peter, James Horton and Jim McGuinness and everybody says they're so similar. Yeah, they are very, very similar. Obviously, uh, uh, it, it took them a while to get there. They started off nearly from a very low point uh, two years ago. Uh, uh, Mayo beaten in Longford and Donegal yeah. beaten in, in Cross Midland. But uh, what, a, what a turnaround by do both managers. But into, going into this game, I think the first time uh, that we've seen Donegal, that they've come up against a team that uh, we would feel that Donegal have probably the better individual players. Uh, against Cork and Kerry would have looked at it, maybe they might have the better individual players. I think that's why there's some confidence about Donegal going to this final. We have, uh, we probably have the better individual players and we would feel that we have the better team as well. Yeah. Chris, I suppose to Donegal fans and the celebration, I rang you during the week and you said, Pierce, I'm at another function, another party, another do. It has been crazy here. And a word for the clubs as well here because obviously the county team has taken a lot of focus but the club structure is so important here in Donegal. Yeah, absolutely, and I suppose the, the clubs have maybe suffered for, for want of a, a better term, like it was at a, a thing with St. Unans last Friday night, and I think they, I don't think they've played a, a senior game since maybe the middle of July and stuff, but I suppose it's maybe that this has come as a surprise that at the start of the year, no one in Donegal really could have said definitively we were going to be preparing for an All-Ireland final, so it has taken us a bit by surprise, and now maybe that we know the structure, that the fixtures committee and that can maybe sit down over the winter and devise a plan that will, will suit for 2013. Call it for me, and uh, the scoreline? Only go by four. And Peter, finally for yourself, uh, I suppose in 30 seconds, give me your summary of what's going to happen and uh, your prediction. Well, I was there in 1992 as a, as a worker journalist as well, probably one of the few that were there in 1992. And we went to 1992 uh, more hopeful than anything else against the Dub from very strong favourites. This time it's probably different for this team. Uh, they have to shoulder that burden of uh, favouritism. But I think that they're very, very uh, capable of doing that. And I would expect them to win by three points will do me on the day. Three points, he said, uh, on the day. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, uh, as I said, uh, Chris McNulty from the Donegal News and Peter Campbell from the Donegal Democrat. They've, they've been brilliant support to myself as a sports journalist. And I know what to go through as a doctor, Nikina Madge, in Inniskillen when it's bitterly, bitterly cold. And lads, I hope you enjoy the day, the sandwiches, the tea and everything that goes with it in Crow Park. They're lucky men and they're going to enjoy it this weekend. Now, we started this programme with a bang. And let me tell you, we're going to finish it.